Hey, roofers. So one of the biggest things that I see in the roofing industry is having a poor customer experience. This is a huge issue, and you're probably losing clients left and right simply by not having systems in place that provide the ideal customer experience. How do you do that? How do you actually build the ideal customer experience? In this video that I'm sharing with you today, I went through with a few of my mastermind members in my marketing mastermind group and really tried to line out the exact best case scenario of a customer experience. And, and this goes well beyond what you even think, right? This goes from all the way from the very first time that a customer interacts with your brand all the way through to beyond the sale. So a lot of roofers that I talk with and, and I talk with four to five roof, roofing company owners every single day and hardly any of them, none of them have this mapped out. None of y'all have this mapped out and none of y'all actually have it truly set beyond going beyond the sale. Okay. And what I mean by that is that you have a way to contact your customers over and over again. Right. And you are the logical choice in your market. And this is exactly how to make your, yourself, your brand, your company stand head and shoulders above your competition. Okay. So check out this video uh, below, watch through it. And if you're interested in anything like this, we are mapping this out for our own customers, our own clients, as well as our mastermind members. Okay. So if you have any questions about any of that, feel free to reach out to me at chris.hunter at roofingsites.com or use the comments down below. All right. But let's go ahead and jump into this video. All right. Thanks. So I read a book maybe about three or four years ago. It was pre-COVID and it was a book called Never Lose a Customer Again. Okay. And mm. they, in that book, they talked about exactly what we're going to go over here, right? The customer experience and really mapping out every tiny step in the customer experience. Okay. It's called the customer journey. All right. And to not only map it out, but to, Think about what would the ideal situation be? Okay. What is the best case scenario? If I had unlimited budget, if I had unlimited people to be able to implement all of this, what would be the ultimate customer experience for my roofing company? Okay. So in my mind, and I started mapping this out this week, just really thinking through each of these steps here. All right. You've got three main areas. You've got before the sale, which is marketing. Okay. You've got during the sale, which is your sales process. You've got after the sale, which is your operations. You're actually implementing the job. You're doing the job. And then number four, after the job. Okay. Okay. I will guarantee that if you implement even half of what we're going to outline here, you're going to stand heads and shoulders above everybody else in your service area. Yeah. And that by itself, singular, if you did just this by itself, most likely would exponentially increase your sales. Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's start going through this, all right? Before the sale. Stop me anytime here if you say we don't we probably wouldn't do that as a roofing company. I'm doing it from an outsider standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, thinking through y'all's businesses here, okay? So number 1, and this, these are all things that we talked about at the very beginning in our planning was define your differentiators. What's your compelling sales proposition? What sets you aside from everybody else that you work with or sorry, in that you compete with risk reversal guarantee. This is what your guarantee is, right? Do you do the GAF or Cor Owens Corning's and then some, because everybody does the warranty for the manufacturer's warranty. Everyone does that. But Maurice, I know that you've got one that's pretty good. It's gold, right? That should be how you lead with everything. 
right? This is our guarantee. We've got someone here in what actually the first roofing company that I worked with here in college station, Schulte roofing. Okay. It's home of the bulletproof roof. That's his mm. guarantee. <laughs> How does he back that up? Has he shot? A that's not what I asked him. I asked him that he said, that's not what it means. And I'm like, that's not what it says. Yeah. So that it sounds like, yeah. So, <laughs> so we adjusted his guarantee to home of the bulletproof roof guarantee. That was the closest I could get him to d halfway defining that. So that yeah. leads me to in, in all of your marketing, be clear with that. Don't be ambiguous. Don't like that right there. Bulletproof roof. What the heck does that even mean, man? Can you shoot up in the roof? And he said, no. And all these people, they just, my, my guarantee is bulletproof. That's not what your marketing says. Anyways. So the next step, sorry, go ahead. It's on my list as well. I've asked people, what's your guarantee? I'm going to be around for a while. I don't really have one. Just call me and I'll do the right thing. But that's yeah. so subjective. Yes, it's subjective. Yeah. And it just, yeah. it makes me cringe on the inside telling people that because I'm like, I don't know. You put me on the spot. I don't have one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's something that you need to sit down and really figure out, right? I think. And really now you need to sit down and figure that out and probably talk with Maurice here. I know that you're in the Dimitri program that, that gives you that really good guarantee, right? Yeah. Next is your origin story. What's your origin story? What's your founder story? What is your story? Why are you doing what you do and, and what's driving you to do it? Okay. Other than money, right? People don't want to hear that. Okay. No. They want to hear this is a third generation company that's been around for a hundred years or whatever. They want to hear stories like that, or that you started this company because you worked with another company and they weren't doing things right. So you decided to go off on your own and, and build your own company that does the right thing every time. Build that story, write the story, have chat GPT, refine it and, and, and fix that and put that on your about page. Okay. People are going to read your about page. Okay. Brand messaging, make sure you're, you have your logos on your uniforms, your vehicles, your signs, your door hangers, whatever, right? Make sure that it looks professional. Make sure that you look professional, all right? As you go to appointments, okay? Grassroots outreach, right? We call it the hustle, right? This is when you're first starting out local referral partner programs, right? Start working with, with referrals and start William, you were telling me that you were getting referrals from other companies, from home builders and, and stuff like that. So those are great. Keep, keep nurturing those relationships as much as you possibly can. That's part of our referral system, right? The referral program, right? The top tier there. Weekly outreach and awareness campaigns, craft referral partner reward offers, land referral partner ongoing reminder marketing, right? Meaning, hey, we're still out here. How can we help you? How can we serve you? A thing. Neighborhood brand awareness. We put in door hangers, postcards, sales letters, yard signs. All of those things go into that. Okay. That's all branding, brand awareness, right? Getting them to even know that you're out there. Yes. I got bit on that one this past week doing a roof on Saturday. And my crew called me, hey, this guy next door wants a, he wants an idea of what's going to cost to do his. Where's your yard sign? Crap. Yeah. 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 Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll get down to it, but. Part of the customer experience is every job sign, right? Every job, have your crews out there in your shirts, okay? I know they're subs. That's okay. You can require that they wear professional um, uniform, okay? Slap a magnet on their truck while they're there, okay? Whatever it takes. Um, okay, lead gen. And this is what we've been talking about. Uh, and I haven't really talked about this, but having 20 to 30 poles in the water, meaning that when you go fishing, would you rather fish with one pole or 30 poles? Okay. Me, if I could do it, if I had 30 poles, I'd rather fish with 30 poles. Okay. So yeah. what this means in the, in marketing is to have all of these pieces, all of these systems set up, like we're working on now, search engine optimization, Google maps, Facebook ads, Google ads, LSAs, next door, directory ads, Yelp, whatever. Okay, wherever that you can get leads in, put a poll in there. Test it. See if it works. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, right? All of these different places. Door hangers, 
Yard signs, EDDM. EDDM stands for Every Door Delivered Marketing. EDDM. Every Door Delivered. It's a postal service to where you can put in either a zip code or you can put in a list of addresses, okay, and have something delivered to them, all right? For every job, what's keeping you from sending out a letter to everyone on both sides of the street, on their backyard neighbors, their other side of the neighbors saying, hey, we're going to be out there. Please excuse the noise and the mess. By the way, since we're out there, if you need a, a roof inspection, you, this person had hail, you might have hail issues also. We might be able to help you. Anyways, just a, a quick letter that goes out in every job. Okay. That's an Adam Bisman's program, and I have the template for it. I just didn't do it on my last job, and I'm kicking myself in the ass for it. Yeah, it could lead to two or three more jobs for every job that you get. Okay, so every door delivered, what does the M stand for? Marketing? EDDM? Every door direct mail. Direct mail, that's it. Not delivered. Direct mail, right? EDDM. So if you do a search for that, you can do that exact thing, right? Mm -hmm. Come up with the letter that goes out after every single job and just have your assistant do this for you, right? Every job, make it a system. Okay. All yeah. right. That's lead gen, lead follow-up, right? Different yeah. kinds of leads, right? There are different kinds of leads out there that come in, right? There are hot leads. There are leads that are just testing the waters. Okay. Do you have the systems in place to nurture those leads? Okay. These are important things. Okay. Follow up and chase leads effectively. I've got a small section that I started on, on something that was taught to me. It's called the chase. Okay. And you've got a hot lead chase and you've got a post estimate chase. All right. And we'll see these here in a little bit, but you can do some of these with automation automations like email and SMS but calling, you're going to probably have to do that on your own, right? But the whole idea here is to chase down a lead, call them, email them, text them, call them, email, text, call them, email, text, and keep doing that until they either tell you to go away, <laughs> leave yeah. me alone, I already hired someone else. Yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say, I, I call it being pleasantly persistent. Yes. You're chasing Chase the no. Yeah. That's right. So this is the chase, right? Most roofers that I talk with, they stop after that first one to two interactions and that's it. They move on. Keep chasing because the deal is, is that customer might not be ready at that point. Even though they reached out to you, they might not be ready to make a buying decision or to yeah. take that next step, which in y'all's case would be from a hot lead into an appointment. Yeah. If you've given yeah. them an estimate, then that's to sign the estimate and get going on that. They might not be motivated yet enough for that. It might not be raining, right? Once it gets raining, guess what? They're going to be motivated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, Chris, one of the things that I do uh, is about being pleasantly uh, persistent. Is like I might call them, like after I, we submitted the uh, estimate to them, and then they'll answer the phone. And I just call them to follow up to make sure you got the estimate to see if you had any questions about anything. And they said, I got two more, two more estimates I'm going to get, and we'll be back in contact with you. And so, But a lot of times, they don't even give you a call back if they've gone with someone else. So right. what I do is I ask them, is it okay if I give you a call back next Monday? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking for permission. Yes. So every time I call them and I reach out to them and I talk to them, I always ask for permission mm -hmm. to call them back. So they said I can call them back. That way, I'm not getting on their nerves. Yeah. That makes sense. So. No and, and this is where a CRM comes in handy to tell you what that next step is, right? And to schedule that out. Mm -hmm. And I reserve Fridays to do exactly that, to chase my leads, to chase my people that I've sent proposals to chase. And I leave the rest of it, leave, mm -hmm. right, to nurturing, okay? What my staff is already doing, right? I'm creating content. They're sharing that content out. Right. So people are getting, and you're on my list. So you get it too. Right. You get my newsletter. You get any of our webinars. Right. You get any of 
pretty much any kind of content that we put out there, including podcasts, right? You that's coming into your inbox. That's nurturing you, right? Into a long-term nurture sequence. And we'll talk about that here in a minute, but that's exactly what we talk about on staying top of mind. I just talked with someone on our webinar that we sent this book to him signed last June, I think, right? I signed a yeah. hundred books. I have a list of a hundred people that I want to work with. This is called the dream 100. <laughs> we sent a hundred of these books out. Okay. I yeah. signed a hundred of these books. And so he asked on my webinar, he's, I'm not sure how I got your book and it's signed. I don't know how I got that. And I said, oh, I know you're on my dream 100 list. What's a dream 100 list? Well, that's a list of the hundred people that I want to work with. You're one of those. So let's talk, right? Mm. That was a year ago. So talk about a long-term nurture sequence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. During the sale. All right. Lead conversion. They call in, they convert into a lead, right? If they call, if they fill out a form, if they reach out to you via Facebook, Instagram, wherever, right? Do you have, how do you interact with them? Is it professional? Okay. Do you use a call script when someone calls in? Can you pass that call script on to somebody else. Can you train somebody else with that call script to answer those phone calls, qualify those leads and put them into an appointment? Okay. Cause that's the primary thing that you need to be doing when people call in you as business owners, you already know that right. Instinctively, you know that, but the people that you hire might not know how to do that. You've got to be able to train them on that. So you need to develop that script now, write it down, document it, so that when you bring someone in to do that, you just say, here, follow this script. Let's go through it and role play. Okay. By the way, in this stage, you have to answer the phone properly. You don't know how many times my own clients are answering the phone. Yeah. This is Jimmy. How can I help you? Wait, is this a roofing company? I've heard this. So answer the phone. Hey there, this is Kangaroo, A1 Kangaroo. How can I help you? This is Maurice talking. Uh -huh. yeah. Answer with a smile. Answer professionally. Yeah, can I add something there, Chris? Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, because I noticed with the past couple of administrative assistants that I had you know, at my office, I had the phone where you can actually see who's calling in. Mm -hmm. And I was just looking at my 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 assistant and she was like screening the calls and she she wouldn't even answer the phone because she's looking at the phone i know who that is that, that's a that's a like a phony call or something like that oh yeah i got it on my list i got it in the back of my mind now to, and now that i'm telling you about it, i need to just go ahead and <laughs> put a new phone in there because i'm going to put a phone in there that doesn't uh show the number oh. it's just going to be a regular phone so they have to answer the phone Every answer time every it rings. Call. Yeah. Answer every <laughs> you know? call. Yeah, yeah, answer every call. And and then also what I found even myself doing this, and I learned this from the guy Dimitri, mm -hmm. and that's only because maybe he's a foreigner, he's from Russia. Yeah. And because we all do this from a, an American standpoint, if you're like have a when we were younger and we had a girlfriend and you don't want to come across as being desperate. So you know that she's the one that's calling and you might see yeah. her number there, but you're going to let the phone ring like two or three times. Oh yeah. Instead yeah. of picking it up. So yeah. I've trained myself to, I'm at two, I'm at two rings now before I was at like three, Yeah. but I'm trying to get it to one ring. So as it, as soon as I hear that phone ring, I'm like Johnny on the spot. I'm answering A1 roofing kangaroo. How can we help that's you right. on the first exactly. ring, not yep. the second ring or the third ring, the first ring. Yep. And yep. it, Seems like it makes a big difference. Absolutely. And I think and, Google and, uh, monitoring us from that standpoint too. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They record every phone call and they're, they've got the most computing power in the world. You think that they could figure out who's answering the phone and not answering the phone. And if they're, it's, it's interesting. And, and I talked with a roofer down in Victoria, Texas, just recently that we brought on, honestly. And he said that 
he wins because he's the only one in his whole service area that picks up the phone. People are surprised that he picked up the phone. Mm. I've got that up here. In the most yeah. oversaturated market in the country, I've got right. that. Right. Right. Oh. right. Uh, exactly. And and the answer from you should be, I'm glad that you got me then. <laughs> How can I'm I help? Here. I'm here. How can I help? That's right. I'd love to help. Now, if I'm working and there's you know noise and stuff in the background, yeah. I don't answer. That's just rude. Yeah. I don't want to answer the phone and start hammering nails. That, that's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah. But that's where you need to have an actual phone system that rolls over to somebody else that can actually pick that up. It you know needs to be a somebody else first. Yeah. I'll bet there's services out there. Honestly, yeah. with that, with that client that I was just talking about that they're having problems answering the phone. We, we've got a phone service that we use. That's very economical. I think it's like less than a hundred dollars a month that will, if you don't pick up after a certain amount of rings, it rolls over to them and they pick it up and you just give them a script and they can go through that script and qualify that person. And if I'm going to talk with them, but if they've got a scheduler link, pull it open and, and schedule that person. So Anyways, answering the phone and answering it professionally is huge. It's absolutely huge in our industry here. All right, next step. If phone is not picked up, move on to step number two, which is down here, and then do the chase sequence, okay? Step number two, salesperson follows up to qualify the lead and schedule the appointment, right? You always want to answer the phone, but if you're not, answer, if you're not then you have to chase those people down. Every single call, call everybody back and keep calling, keep calling to figure out why they called. And don't just move on. Because that's what everybody else is doing. So you want to do what nobody else is doing at this point. And that's really the whole exercise of all of this. Okay. All right. I've got 15 minutes left. So I'm going to just kind of book through some of these things. Okay. And I'm going to share this with y'all later. But booking follow-up, making sure that you're indoctrinating the people that come and book on your appointment schedule. <laughs> you're indoctr indoctrinating them to your brand. What is that? That's your origin story. Testimonials jobs. This is what I believe in. This is why I do this kind of thing. Thank. And it's always starts with a thank you email. That, that very first thing that should be a minimum that every company sends out when somebody books a schedules an appointment. Thank you so much for scheduling a time with a one kangaroo. We really do appreciate all of our customers. We're going to do our best to be there on time at X date at this address. Is this correct? If not, please reply back to this and we'll get the correct address put in our system. Okay. Stuff. It's all the little things, really this whole experience here, talking about customer experience. It's all the very little things. Okay. Next appointment service experience. Are you showing up on time? Are you showing up? Not just you, but when you get salespeople, you got to be able to manage these, right? Are they showing up five to 10 minutes early? Do they look Always. professional, right? Yep. Do they look professional? Are they showing up in a branded truck? Do they have a branded shirt, branded hat, branded notebook, branded iPad cover? And that could be just something dumb as putting a sticker on a cover, right? I've got that right here on my journal. Okay. These things I got from Canva for... I think twenty dollars for five hundred of them. Mm. Okay, it's little things like that that show that you are professional at, at what you do. Okay, yeah. do you show up with an iPad so that you can give them an estimate right then and there? Speaking of estimate, you got to provide it right. Speed to estimate is critical at this stage. First estimate that comes in, most likely people are going to go with, even if they're shopping around. Because guess what? What I, happens if those other two companies don't even show up to that appointment? You're going to get that job. Yes. I found that to not be as accurate for me. I found that I'll be the third or fourth guy sometimes to show up. I'll mm -hmm. take a week to get an estimate. I win the job just because I'm personal with people sometimes. Yeah. I don't have that salesman. I'm not, you know, I'm never going to see you again. I'm here yeah. to just take your money by. And yeah. people have told me that. Yeah. Because I ask him, I was like, wow, I'm competing with some of the big guys right there. How do I get this job? Like, I'm not, I'll do a good job. I'm not mad at it, but how? And they'll tell me, you seem real. Yeah. Okay. You're not <laughs> yeah, a sales guy. Yeah. That's why, right? You're the owner. You care about your business, right? Now, the trick ah. is as you 
hire oh. salespeople is to get them to care as much about your business as you care about your business. That's the trick. That's the oh, real key that. to business. That's good. That's one of the best things I just learned. Because there are yeah. all of this. Yes. No one's yeah. going to care. Or getting or trying to get them to. Which is why I continue to say you should, your last position that you should hire is sales. Not your first. That should be your last position that you hire for. Because you care more about your business than anybody else in the entire world is ever going to care. You're going to yeah. present way better than anybody else. Hmm. Okay. I like that. I just, that, that opened my mind up to about 80 different channels real quick. Okay. <laughs> it all, it's, it's making uh, a lot more sense. But, but yeah, Chris, I was going to say, but everybody, I guess, can't sell. There's this thing called the laydowns, whereas all you got to do is if you show up on time and you get your material mm -hmm. and uh, the company that you're working for has got good ratings, that helps you. But it, a lot of the sales, there are some of them that you really have to overcome the objections. Yeah. And that's where the selling comes into play. And yeah. everybody doesn't have the, I guess, the skills to do that, especially if you're not like a outgoing yeah. type person, if you're an introvert. Right. And they, they say, we we want to get two other estimates. We we got two other estimates for you. Get, but that other guy, he's going to sell, he's going to keep asking, but he's got that kind of personality. Yeah. So let me ask you here, right? Is that, do you think that a properly trained quote unquote salesperson that can answer those objections is going to do better than you in your business on sale? Better not. Better not. Yeah. Because again, you, be you care more than they do. They care about the commission. That's all they care about. Yeah. You I can, uh, over, yeah, you can overcome the objections, but to keep, Asking for the order because if you the there's some guys out there that they'll keep asking like eight ten times because once mm -hmm. you get up to that number you've asked for the order that many times you're probably going to sell it but or yeah. they might just if say you follow okay. the sequence fifteen times oh yeah right? okay. that's the latest research is fifteen times that you have to ask for a sale fifteen huh? mm -hmm. they might <laughs> yeah. You know, Say that they already told you so many times that they got two other estimates, but you keep asking, so they just agree with you to get you out of their house. Yeah, because you got the three day right of rescission, and you wear them down like my daughter does with me on getting whatever she wants. So that's a gadget. Okay, all right. So I don't want to get stuck on that, but mull that over. Think about that. Okay, sales. The whole sales stage, every step, every tiny experience matters, okay? From the appointment to the very first call, the very first interaction, the very first time that you show up to an appointment, when you send an, an estimate, all of those things are part of the overall customer experience, okay? Now, let's talk about the estimate because we did talk about that and we're we, we, this is still going to be continued here because this is an important one. Got to be branded, got to be branded correctly, got to be branded on brand colors, look nice, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Everyone's going to have that. Some of them are going to have the handwritten stuff. That's fine. Whatever. You want an estimate that, that sends to them quickly. It can be printed off. Okay. It works on a mobile phone. Okay. That it has testimonials. It has jobs that you've done right with pictures of your jobs that you've done. It's got pictures of their problem. Right. And I like the videos. If you can put, if you can do videos, do a video on there that they can click on, they can watch the video. This is what's wrong. Right. Agitate that problem. What happens if they don't fix it? Right. This is a normal quote unquote marketing framework of problem agitate solution. Right. So problem agitate that problem and then give them the solution. A selection solution. Tell them what, what the fix is. Okay. And then of course, put in your pricing, put in all that kind of stuff, but you need testimonials, you need job photos, you need uh, all of these things, right. In, in your estimates and your proposals. Okay. So start thinking about those. What can you include there next after the sale? 
Okay. Think after the sale. Once the sale is closed, then what? All right. Thank you. Email and SMS. That can be automated. Appointment, email, and SMS to ensure they're made aware of the appointment and they're fully prepared for it, that they know that you're going to be there, you're going to be professional, you're going to protect their plants, their dogs, right? Send that mailer, right, with a business card from the foreman to all surrounding, and that's using EDM, EDM, right? Send that letter out to everyone. Put your sign in the yard. I didn't put that down here. I right. tried to get Chat GPT to make me a logo, and it did not do a good job at all. That was, <laughs> if I was on acid, it'd make yeah. a good logo, but goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Not I yet. would just go to Canva, create a logo in Canva, put a house that's a, or a roof, put your name. Nice and easy. Keep it simple, right? Thank you, Basket. Nobody does this. Nobody. Gourmetgiftbaskets.com. $50 to send out a gift basket of cookies with a thank you card from you once you close the sale. Do the work. Crew arrives on time, removes existing roof, replace it, cleans up the work site. Site's inspected and signed off by the foreman or you right now, right? Get a foreman soon. Answer that. Okay. After the job, send an invoice out, obviously. Thank you, email. Unless it's insurance. Unless it's insurance. Then you got to deal with all That's that. That's the mind. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Send a thank you email. Simple. Thank you so much for trusting W2 Construction for your roofing needs. We're going to be here for you. This is our guarantee. Please call me at your phone number with any problems that, that you see. Ask for a review. Ask for a referral. All right? I'm like, this you know what? should I be... Got a What's that? I got a guy that owes me a review. He's been ghosting me for a while. Ah, he did a really him. good job Chase with house. Yeah. Chase him, right? All right? Salesperson calls or visits the homeowner maybe a month later, a couple weeks later. Make sure that everything's okay. Follow up. Nobody's doing yeah. this stuff. Nobody's doing it. There, that one. Yeah. Send them a thank you basket or box, right? We talked about the, the box last week, right? Send them that box. Put all your, put a thank you card in it signed by you. You can get a branded box for super cheap at boxup.com. <laughs> That's where I use to do my boxes. Okay. My boxes are branded. They look very professional. Add a notebook, T-shirt, Yeti, pen, hat, whatever swag that you've got, okay? Business card in it, just in case anything goes wrong. Thank you card, of course. A postcard maybe with a QR code that goes to your review page, a QR code with a link that goes to your referrals page on your website. Make it easy for them to refer business to you. Incentivize them. Okay. Long term, nurture them long term. Ongoing marketing, mark, monthly newsletter. This should be a minimum for every business. Every single business out there should have a monthly email, monthly newsletter. If you really want to stand out, print it and send it out. You've got their address. Make it timely on things that are coming up. Like here in Texas, we just had an ice storm, right? We don't know what the heck ice dams are. But I'm sure they could happen. So quarterly check-in call, do what everybody else is, nobody else is doing. Call them. Hey, just wanted to check, see how your roof is doing. Oh, awesome. All right, great. Do you think that we need, I know we had a storm that came through the other day. You want us to run out there real quick, send someone out there and, and check, make sure there's no lifted shingles, anything like that. Awesome. Okay. No, no big deal. Hey, I tell you what, we did a lot of business or we did your roof and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not sure if you're quite aware that we also do gutters and siding and windows. 
We also, by the way, also just added solar. Did you know that? And by the way, if you use us, if you're thinking about that for solar, if you use us, it won't void your warranty. So awesome. Cool. Hey, by the way, while I have you, I noticed that you didn't leave us a review yet. Would you mind leaving us a five-star review? I think that we gave you five-star service, right? Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah, so you have to tell oh, people hey. that. Yeah. And oh, by, the way, oh, by the way, hey, we love referrals. We Did you know that we have a referral program here? Oh, yeah. We pay $250 in a gift card to Texas Roadhouse for every single re-roof. If something leads to a, someone else getting a roof, we would be happy to send you and your family to Texas Roadhouse on us. Does that sound good? Okay, great. Go to kangaroof.com forward slash referral. Awesome. Nice to talk with you. We'll call you back in about a quarter. Easy phone call, easy script, right? Nobody else is doing that. Nobody else is doing some of Nobody. these things here. Nobody. Definitely no roofers, right? But hardly any small business has time for these kinds of things. You start building systems like this into place, you will be heads and shoulders above absolutely everybody in the industry, much less your service area. Okay? Focus on customer experience.